I am Spetsnaz. But I'm no longer one of you. I am Spetnaz, but I'm no longer one of you. Red Scorpion. Some like to call it Dolph Lundgren's Rambo, or Dolph Lundgren's Commando. I, I get it. The 1988 flick would be Lundgren's breakout action role as a lead. While everyone knows him as the hammering Russian Ivan Drago in Rocky IV, and of course He-Man in Masters of the Universe, it was Red Scorpion that showed what Lundgren could do when given the ammo to run wild on his own. And run wild he does. Let's go. Red Scorpion is one of those movies too many have forgotten about, and that's one reason why I wanted to do it for real action. Your friends probably only know Lundgren for his most famous roles, and even for more recent stuff like The Expendables and Creed II. But chances to see Lundgren kick ass solo haven't had the same amount of attention, and that ain't right. From the stark opening credits featuring a grim-faced Lundgren, Red Scorpion establishes its gritty credentials from the start, but also its unusual politics for an American action movie. Lundgren plays Lieutenant Nikolai Petrovich Rachenko, a Russian Spetnaz, which just means he's a kick-ass Russian special forces. He's recruited to infiltrate an anti-communist rebel outfit in Africa and kill its leader. Nikolai comes across like the dullest Russian anvil in the shed. He's a do-what-I'm-told kind of guy, without thinking anything through. Hence, his plan to stir things up by generally acting like the biggest asshole at the bar. Imagine, what would you do if someone who looked like Dolph Lundgren came into your bar and started picking fights? I'd probably quit drinking. But the plan works. Nikolai ends up tossed in prison with Kalunda played by character actor Al White and American propagandist Dewey Ferguson, played by a live M. Emmett Walsh. Nikolai uses those big muscles to help them escape and is taken back to the rebel camp where he embarrassingly fails to murder the leader. Oops. Guess it's hard for a bunch of anti-communist African rebels to trust a seven foot tall Russian tank that he's a man of his word. The thing about Red Scorpion is that it's both a really dumb, macho action flick, but also has a bit of maturity to it. Yes, it's simple, unnuanced stuff, but credit where it's due. Nikolai comes to figure out that his bosses weren't being honest with him, and that he's been fighting for the wrong side all along. But that's who he was always trained to be. So when they betray him, it's a devastating blow almost as rough as the terrible torture he endures at the hands of this needle-wielding jerk. Ugh. It gives me the chills every time I think about it. Nikolai's journey to redemption alongside a native Bushman is corny as hell, although I'd probably pay to watch these two team up on a buddy flick written by Shane Black. Know what I'm saying? Also, the film has echoes of the real-life conflict that saw Russia and Cuba teaming up to wreck African society. That's a thing that actually happened. Behind the camera, you had Joseph Zito, who real action fans will know as the man behind Missing in Action and Invasion USA. So he knows what he's doing in the action department, and Red Scorpion brings it. This is essentially a war flick. So you've got tanks, huge guns, including an experimental weapon that reminded me of Eraser, and of course, Lots of death, something the producers weren't exactly happy about. The 
communists are brutal in their attack against a helpless tribe, but that only means Nikolai has to match their bloodshed all by himself, which he does. The last 10 minutes of the movie are an absolute rampage of violence, and Lundgren makes it all look so easy. Zito knew how to shoot his star, too. <laughs> Take it off! <laughs> Take it all off! <laughs> it's a little shocking to see Lundgren this young. Sure, he was 31 years old at the time, but he looks 20, and he's lean and ripped. He couldn't act his way out of a set of Russian nesting dolls. Are you out of your mind? No. Just out of bullets. But damn, does he command the screen. Dolph Lundgren, Louis Gossett Jr., The Punisher. With Tom Savini providing cool practical visual effects and an authentic but troubled shoot right out of Namibia, Red Scorpion really delivers. There's barely a woman in sight, so don't expect anything hot and heavy going on in Red Scorpion. The closest thing you'll get to it is Dewey's... Uh, Let's call it enthusiastic encouragement of Nikolai to strip and get in the water. We also have Dewey to blame for the massive earworm overuse of Little Richard's Long Tall Sally, his favorite song. Apparently it's the only song the radio can get in Africa, I don't know. You'll be ready to shoot Dewey yourself after a while. Red Scorpion wasn't exactly a massive hit, earning just $4 million when it was released in 1988 and eventually in America in 1989. A pseudo-sequel, Red Scorpion 2, was released in 1994 and has zero connection to the original. It has to do with an agent infiltrating a bunch of Nazi skinheads and stars journeyman actor Matt McComb. No Lundgren, me no like. The film has gained a bit of infamy too. No, not for that terrible haircut some evil stylist gave a poor, young, and impressionable Dolph Lundgren, but for being one of the very few films produced by lobbyist and convicted felon Jack Abramoff. Yes, he of the Abramoff scandal. He actually produced the, quote, sequel, too, so he must have seen something in this whole Red Scorpion business. Abramoff also caused problems by moving the shoot from Swaziland to Namibia while South Africa was under apartheid rule. That caused huge political backlash, and Warner Brothers pulled out of the production because they had explicitly demanded it not be filmed in South Africa. The delays in production caused the budget to balloon $16 million, which ain't good when you pull in just four. Ultimately, Red Scorpion holds up as an awesome action flick and one of the unsung gems of Dolph Lundgren's career. How is it that nobody has ever thought of doing a reboot, especially with the way things are in the world right now? I'd pay to see that. How about you, Dolph? Fucking A. <laughs> Red Scorpion gets 8 out of 10 Stallones. Thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our channel, tell your friends who like this sort of content, and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate all of your support.